This video is going to be a film study look at Justin Matabike, who was physically dominant at times in the Ravens' win against the Los Angeles Rams on Sunday. I think he had five quarterback hits, seven tackles, one sack, which brings him to 11 at this point in time. Real quick lead in here, to be honest with you, because I want to get uh, the film started. This is first possession. It's going to be Freeman for three yards. What I really like about Matabike, he pointed this out a number of times in the past couple of years, is he can redirect meaning he can take a hit, a combo block, in this case one that dislodges him, gets his head on the wrong side in terms of his gap, and then he can beat the head of the offensive lineman, reset, win to his gap side, which is not something that in small space, in small space he's able to redirect, get back to the point of attack, in this case his gap. And at the moment that 73 combos up, the left guard, moment he combos up, is right when Justin Matabike decides to win and just snap, pull uh, the center down and then the ability to get to the football and, and limit Freeman to a three-yard game. For me, it's the variety of things that he can do on defense um, and, the, and the different manners that he wins. It's not always power. There's some technique there as well. This is a second and goal, uh, first possession. Matabike is kind of hidden in this kind of tilt four-eye or tilt three, whatever you want to call it, against the right guard, just walks him back into the quarterback's lap and gets there. He he does this two to three times per game, but I feel like he does this early, meaning able to just bull rush someone, walk them back into the quarterback's lap. There's a cumulative effect there on the offensive line, if you ask me, because of his pad level, his strength, his core strength, and then the ability to impact the quarterback, in this case, Matt Stafford, just after the ball has been thrown. It's a tough fight with the right guard, don't get me wrong, and he doesn't win every one of them. But he's won enough this year to make me think that it, it can't be fun to be an offensive lineman or quarterback, clearly, and know that you're going to go up against Justin Matabike. It, it, all as well, it, it has to be a nightmare for Rams fans or any team to sit and watch their quarterback uh, be put in peril when they're dealing with someone like Justin Matabike. Second possession now. It's a passing situation, third and six. Matabike is over here on our right side. The defense is left. Always going to win um, against the left tackle on an outside spin. And then Matabike just uh, cleans this up. He now has at least half a sack in every game this year but two. You get a little bit of an illustration of the kind of snap pull that I'm talking about. Thankfully, Clowney is there because when Matabike grabs and pulls 69 to his left, the down bottom right part of our screen, he literally throws 69 directly into Clowney. I think 69 had some awareness that Clowney was come was uh was moving to the inside. But in any case, that's that's his one of the main things that he does is grab, snatch, and pull. And then basically use that leverage to clear and get to the quarterback. Like I said, he's got at least a half a sack in every game but two. And in fact, in nine different games this year, he has a sack. I think that's pure insanity from a from a defensive tackle uh position and it clearly illustrates how much he's going to get paid when it comes time. Fast forward a little bit. We're now into the third possession. He's been very good against the run as well. Switches sides, so everybody on the offensive line gets an opportunity to have to deal with him. He wins to the play side here. Again, beats the head, um, if you ask me. Limits Freeman for three. Freeman's, Freeman's on his tracks. It's a cool scheme as well, if you ask me, from the Rams. They're folding Cooper Cup late all the way across against the motion to set up some plays that I've seen them run before where the running back kind of winds this thing all the way back. The Ravens seem to have some awareness of it. They've dropped Queen down to the tight end side to kind of account for it. But thankfully, Matabike is able to win and be the primary guy there, limit Freeman to three yards. Like I said, he plays on both sides um, of the field. We're getting the other, the other end zone angle at this point. Same possession. You got a second and seven. And I think this one, this is a pin pull, and but they're basically reach blocking him or trying to with the center. Check out the closing speed of him and Queen. Just two badass football players who can play through contact. I feel like sometimes certain players, I think this applies to Matabike and Queen, if you're watching as a fan in the stands, you don't have the – the benefit of the broadcast review, you're not sure who made the tackle sometimes. We used to say there's a certain way that tackles get finished by particular guys. 
for me, Matabike and Queen are two of those players. You can watch the pile or watch the, the players end up in a pile, and you can see, kind of recall the burst that led to it and know that it's a guy like Matabike. With his size and speed, the ability to move horizontal, his size and power, excuse me, the ability to move horizontal here with, with this much uh, tenacity and closing speed, I think, is notable. All the physical attributes are there, and now we've got you know super great technique along with uh, a great scheme that's uh, freed him up at times. First and goal uh, from the three, same drive. This is going to be Kyron Williams um, up the middle for two yards. Matabike and Smith. It's the strength and the core to not get dislodged by the combo. So he's dealing with the left guard, and the left tackle is going to combo him. His left foot moves about maybe a foot and a half, and he's able to reset his balance. Look at the leverage that he's on and the power in his core to withstand uh, these angle blocks and then get involved in the tackle. Him and Roquan limit Kyron Williams to two yards. He's a unique talent. <laughs> like I said earlier, he's going to get paid a lot. But as we go through the film, hopefully I'm doing a, I do a good enough job of illustrating it it's the variety of things that he's able to do against the run and against the pass that I think makes him extremely unique, even among the, the defensive linemen who have double-digit sacks already, let alone talking about this is a defensive tackle doing so. Late second quarter, fifth possession for the Rams, again, wins to the front side. Gets a little bit of a combo by the left tackle and then presses the left guard off, off him to get in position to make the play. Now, look, Owe and Stone are clearly involved here as well. I didn't notice this reaction to the motion live. I'm talking about uh, Geno Stone blitzing in this gap on motion away. I didn't notice this live. I didn't remember this until I watched the film uh, Tuesday night. So I'm, I'm kind of impressed, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Dick LeBeau and the Steelers used to do this against us on motion away. The backside safety would get a run through. What it does is it means... You know, for the inside linebacker, hey, you don't have to worry about this gap. Somebody else got this gap. You can play this downhill. You can play this right now. I don't think we really do that on this play uh, from a Patrick Queen or Roquan Smith perspective. But uh, I, I appreciate the stunt or, or the reaction to the motion. Uh, one of three times that now I've seen us do that during the game. Moving to the second half, this is a six possession. <clears throat> Most of this from here on out is going to be uh, against the pass. He's really good, like I said, on these snap pulls. In this case, it's a stunt with him and Oway. Excuse me, with him and Van Noy. Uh, Van Noy is committed on these stunts. You know, he's basically taking the right tackle on his tracks here, and then Matabike is going to snap pull this guy down to this side and redirect or loop to the outside and get a uh, quarterback hit. Clowney is there as well for a second shot. It's a brutal illustration of what it's like as a quarterback to deal with, you know, any NFL defensive lineman getting in, getting in your area. But these, these guys particularly, Matabike, Clowney, uh, when they get there, they arrive with some attitude. He's got – he played a lot of snaps Sunday. That would be my only complaint. I think he played 58. To me, that seems like a little bit too much. We, you know, Travis Jones played well. I'm not going to be able to get a video done on him, but he played well this week. I thought uh, Broderick Washington, whether he's active or not each week, he's a guy who can play. Brent Urban, extremely underrated, if you ask me. 58 snaps, I think, is a little high. Feel free to let me know um, if you agree or not. Late fourth quarter, about six minutes left here. Another one with a push-pull or snap-down element. It's a first and ten with uh, six minutes left. Amazing catch by Puka Nakua. Matabike is here, lined up in a three. So outside shade of the guard. I feel like he toes the line between um, just aggressive play and things that will get you penalized and fined by the NFL and, and cause a lot of consternation among soft football fans. We have a lot more of them now um, asking for him to be called for a penalty. Sometimes he toes the line and sometimes he stomps all over it. He's a force of nature. I, you know, regardless of what we think of the rules or what we think of how he plays, I love it. I love the no-nonsense, I'm going to get after the quarterback and I'm going to make contact with him and hit him. 
Uh, hopefully he stays within the rules to do so as much as possible early in the season. Uh, we called him the Mad Raven because he had, I think, three penalties in week one against the Texans. Look, as an offensive line, as an offense, as a quarterback, you've got some choices. You can control some of it. You don't call a pass play. <laughs> you can double team him or try to at least, or you can block better at the guard position. And that's the problem is that you can't account too many assets from a pass pro perspective for a D tackle. Unique talent, going to get paid. Um, absolute mismatch. Like I said, five quarterback hits against the Rams on Sunday. I think I'm showing you three of them um, in this video. Last play from this game, and then we'll let some other stuff run while I just talk about his play overall this year and in previous seasons. A little over a minute left. It's the ability to get through contact on his tracks. The rip with the left arm here to get underneath of that same left guard, get to Stafford, and be the first guy there. It's a stunt with him and Owe, but Justin Matabike is the first guy there a lot. 26 quarterback hits, I believe, this season. He has so many moves, so many ways that he's gotten a quarterback. It's, it's a, a wider variety than just some of the stunts you've seen or some of the snap-down pull stuff uh, uh, that I've shown you. He's a real diversity, I think, to his rush, his sacks or his quarterback hits that's, well, on one level it's shocking, on one level it's kind of scary. You, you hope that we don't end up having to face a guy like this um, in the playoffs. I struggled to make a sports comparison here. I really did because he reminds me of, uh, of a, like a combat sports athlete really mixed martial arts fighter who has knockouts on his highlight reel from, from left hooks, from overhand rights, maybe a head kick, some ground and pound, knee to the – I mean, he's just – he's done so many different things to get to the quarterback in 2023, and we're only 13 games in. He's just a freak athlete with power in every single movement, which is why I made the MMA comparison. And he has the speed to track down an athletic quarterback – like C.J. Stroud, like you saw here. I have no idea what he's going to get paid. I expect it to be a ton of money, probably too much for the Ravens to be able to afford. That's what you want, right? You want one of your players to develop, and this is what's happened with Justin Matabike. He did show signs in previous seasons, but nothing uh, approaching 11 sacks through 13 games, including nine sacks or nine games with one sack or more. Wins against guards. Wins against left tackles, like you see here. A brutal football player, a guy who, if you ask me, gets it. And when I say gets it, I mean someone who understands that when he gets an opportunity on a running back, a quarterback, whoever, take it and make contact with them. Try to build up some cumulative impact on them to minimize the effectiveness and efficiency of their play, number one. And number two, make them not want to run those concepts again as the game progresses. Man, you guys let me know what you think of Justin Matabike's season. He's one of my, been one of my favorite players for a couple of years. Brilliant play at times. I feel like I can name some of it to you, particularly Minnesota 2021 at home. Played an amazing game that day. Any run concept to him, he destroyed, such that the Vikings tried to run away from him often. I thought he had one and a half sacks in that game as well. I might be misremembering that number, but what we're seeing now is a sustained level of play that equals or exceeds what we saw on that day, which is pretty amazing. Certainly getting a lot more snaps, not rotating time with other D tackles that we had in the past who were really good players. So we had to get Matabike off the field at times. Now he's getting a ton of opportunities, maybe on Sunday against the Rams too much. Being his 58 snaps is a lot, if you ask me. In any case, let me know what you think of the video, the plays that I picked to illustrate um, how diverse his impact is against the pass with quarterback hits and sacks. And then how the high level that he played against the run against the Rams on Sunday, at least on the plays that I showed you. Appreciate you guys' time.